earlier is about mammographic and uh, uh, mammographic interpretation. It's uh, perhaps this topic is particularly relevant to uh, those uh, interpreting mammograms, but uh, equally to those that work in, in you know, X-ray department and everywhere, because it's you know interesting topics on on there. So just to give you an overview, and if it's okay with everyone, I'll just uh, stop the video so we can concentrate on the presentation. Okay, so. Okay, yeah, so um, I'll just give you a bit of background uh, regarding a uh, scale mix and then a little bit about uh, anatomy of the breast and axilla. All these are really important to know um, if you're doing any interpretation and indications when we do mammography, which leads to interpretation, obviously. Uh, important things before interpretation and breast density. And then we'll talk a little bit about mammographic features and what we are really looking at on mammograms uh, when interpreting mammograms and how you actually look and the structure of what you look at on the mammograms. A uh, bit about a report and then again, information on uh, digital breast tomosynthesis and contrast enhanced mammography. Okay. So so just a bit about background, I thought this was, uh, is really important. So traditionally, as we know, uh, interpreting mammograms uh, is, uh, was done by consultant radiologists, so special registrars in training. Uh, but in the UK, there's been a national um, move to delegate this work mm -hmm. to appropriately trained radiographers. And I'll sort of explain a little bit about uh, what appropriate train uh, radiographer is, it's on the screen as well. And it was in agreement with the General uh, Medical Council, Royal College of Radiologists and the Society of Radiographers and the National Breast Screening Program okay. in 2004. So in terms of an appropriately uh, uh, experienced clinical radiographer, someone who has had uh, uh, enough experience in being a radiographer, um, but also following a formal um, interview by the clinical based selection panel. And in most cases, uh, led by the supervising consultant radiologists. Now we have uh, consultant radiographers leading this as well. But I also wanted to just highlight, uh, because I'm coming from a point where it's radiographers reporting this in, as well as radiologists, but in terms of re radiographers, it's just about being aware of the risk management and uh, accountability as you report. Um, mammograms and so uh, always good to read the Society of Radiographers um, accountability and standards and that they should be radiographers should be aware in all circumstances that they are legally accountable for their professional actions and that is very important um, so being answerable for decisions about work and being professionally responsible for the standard of practice um, and so uh, some of the code of professional conducts, which I think uh, the of Zambia also has, um, can be found in the Co College of Radiographers. Okay, so just to give you a brief, uh, brief background about uh, anatomy of the breast, before you actually know uh, how to interpret mammograms, it's important to have an idea of what you are looking at. Um, and so inside the breast is the uh, just look at the structure there at the back of the breast we've got the uh, ribs there and then got the chest wall and then got the internal structures of the breast that you should be mindful of as you interpret uh, uh, mammograms and so it's really being aware of the structures what they look like on pictorial views but actually when you're looking at the mammogram as well so after you've done the mammogram, which I've just put a quick pictorial picture there. So we do craniocordial views and oblique views. And when they come out, craniocordial views are the ones on top and below it's the oblique views. Every time a woman, and in few cases men, they come, we do two views so that you see them in different planes. So actually 
if you think around there, we're looking at the nipo. So in the on the craniocordial views, we are really in this area. And these areas are very important for you when you're interpreting to look around here. Is there anything that has changed? So it's about being aware of breast composition, what looks normal and what is abnormal when you're interpreting. I, I should just stress at this point that uh, for mammography, it's very important that you're viewing the mammograms on uh, high quality monitors, uh, usually five megapixels here. So though it looks like this on the computer, the laptop, uh, actually it would be very difficult to pick something abnormal unless it was very, very obvious. And you see in um, other slides um, what some of the features look like. So some we could sort of see even from the back of the room, but actually when you are interpreting mammogram, it's very important that you're looking at designated monitors. Otherwise it's very difficult to pick up uh, small uh, cancers and in screening setup, it's really very, very uh, small differences that you can see when you compare to previous and um, that may make you think something is not right or is abnormal, okay. So on the other pictorial view there, that bit is just the lymph nodes. So again, within the breast, you may see lymph nodes. And again, it's about being aware, what does the lymph node look like? Is what I'm looking at something worrying, or oh, it's actually lymph node. So through that training, you get to know what you're looking at. So, right. So talking about the indication for a mammogram, uh, women may come through the screening setup. So these are asymptomatic, there's nothing wrong with them. And in the UK, it's those that uh, we screen women aged 50 and over every three years, they get an invitation and they invited for a mammogram and um, they come in large numbers. So you may have mammograms coming through the screening setup or symptomatic setup where the women and men have uh, seen their general practitioners and they've been referred to uh, the uh, breast service. So if somebody has mentioned that they've got a lump, for example, or they've had nipple discharge, could be bloody nipple discharge or something clear, you need to particularly be cautious when you see that, or difference in breast uh, change, uh, density or skin appearances have changed. So there are various things that you, anything that feels different basically, always good to seek medical attention. So bearing that in mind, that's where they, uh, people are coming from before they come to have a mammogram, which will lead to interpretation. Now, just before uh, we look at mammograms, it's very good, important that those mammograms are of good quality. So in terms of how they've been obtained, the compression that has been applied, the amount of breast tissue that has been obtained, you want every, area that is supposed to be visible in a mammogram to be on those pictures. And that's why it's very important for um, radiographers who tend to be mammographers to be well trained, that they're able to get very good mammograms because without that, um, you may miss cancers. And of course, there are times when um, cancers are not in the field of view of a mammogram. So that is unavoidable. And that's where clinical breast examination comes in and educating women to be uh, aware of breast change because then they can seek medical attention if they think something different has occurred uh, in the breast or outside the breast. So good quality mammograms. Then it's also important to be aware of breast composition. How does it look like? What is it, you know, is it just fatty tissue? Is this normal glandular tissue? Where are the vessels? So different uh, uh, information to be aware of. And of course, very important to have um, previous images. If someone has never had images, that's a different story. You have to work with what you have. But if they've always had previous mammograms, it's very important that you obtain those because it's, small changes that can lead you to question what you see on the um, images. Okay, so that's just a pictorial view of basic structural elements of a mammogram. So they have just put, that just shows you 
different patterns of mammogram. So if you can see just for argument's sake, that one in the middle, that white bead just shows, you can see a mammogram that is very fatty. So you can see through and it will be very easy to pick up an abnormality. And you can see that there you've got a pattern that is very, very dense um, and it will be very tricky to pick up small changes just like the other one. And then you have those that could have mixed um, tissue. So you have glandular tissue, fatty tissue, vessels uh, going around the breast. And it's just about knowing those structures so that when you um, are identifying abnormalities, you're able to differentiate which one is which. Okay. So on a mammogram, so you can see that is quite a, what would say dense breast. All this white bit is glandular tissue. That bit there is the nipple but we also have fatty tissue. So if anything was sitting here, it would be very easy to see, but it's also about being aware of what an abnormal thing looks like. Because actually when we look at this, it just looks like you're probably looking like in the sky where you see clouds. Um, but it, this just shows that with such type of what we call parenchymal pattern, anything could be, hide, could be hiding behind that breast. So that's one, pattern one. And can you see now we've got a fatty breast. If there was anything there, you could easily pick out something. Although if, if it was in this area around the nipple, that could still be a challenge. But being aware of different uh, patterns of the breast just helps you to it. And also now we can see all these, those are tiny vessels there, blood vessels. Um, so it's about knowing uh, what's going on. And then here, we've got a lymph node. That's something would say it's a normal look, looking lymph node because it looks oval and it's got a fatty area uh, um, in the middle. Lymph nodes that are abnormal tend to be very dense. So it will be almost rounded and that bit will be very rounded and looking white, so dense. That's another parenchymal pattern, very dense breast, anything could be going on in that breast. So again, it's about, so can you see now the vessels, we can still see them, but actually when you go in here, anything could be happening in that breast. Another type of uh, breast, mostly there we put fatty tissue, but becomes very dense there, making interpretation a challenge. And that is even um, more challenging than the other ones I showed. Almost the whole breast is white. It's a normal breast, but actually if anything was going on, it would be tricky to see. Right, so what are some of the things we are looking at uh, on a mammogram? First thing, uh, masses, going mass. But within masses are different shapes and margins. So you can imagine the breast I, sh I was just showing you on the screen, you might see things that look that shape or that one, rounded, sometimes irregular, but it's also about looking at the margins. So they could be, if you look as well at this one, so it looks like it's, uh, yeah, it is oval, but actually it's obscured. So it's not that sharp on the edges. Um, and sometimes, you know, things like, cysts could come like that. So a pocket with fluid inside could come like that, but it's about scrutinizing it and making sure is it really a cyst or not. So other than the shape, it's about the margins around it. And this is where you say it could be uh, obscured. It could be indistinct. It could be microlobulated like that. It could be speculated. And when it looks speculated, that looks like a worrying, you know, like a star sign worrying uh, feature. Okay, so we just talked about ma ma a mass in the breast. Another feature that we look at in the breast are calcifications. So calcifications are like chalky bits. If you can imagine chalk, we used to use that chalk. Then you, you cut them in small, small pieces and you, could, you, you literally see that on a mammogram and they'll be in the breast, you know. So they could be what we call diffuse. They're pres present in the entire breast or they are grouped and they're regional. And depending on how they're manifesting, you need to, their, their, their features that uh, mean this is concerning or actually we're not sure about this, it's in the middle, 
typical indeterminant or it's linear looking, which is worrying, or it's segmental. All this is about classification. So we've talked about masses and I show you, showed you what it may look like, the shapes. And depending on their shapes, just like calcification, it could be a normal feature of the breast or it could be something worrying. And it's about learning and knowing what feature is worrying or concerning and pick out that and do further tests. So whenever you look at a mammogram, you're looking at, is there any masses? Okay, I've checked the whole thing, no masses. Are there calcifications? No, no calcifications. Because calcification could be due to normal breast changes or hormonal changes, or it could be due to something concerning. And that's why you pay attention to anything like that. Okay, another feature is an asymmetry. And the, 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 as the word says asymmetry, it's something different. So if you, if you take two things or even two bottles, if one is a slightly plastic bottle wrinkled, the other one is smooth, then there's, if you're looking at two, there's an asymmetry because the other one is not the same shape as the other one. So when you look at the breast, it's always right and left, unless obviously they've had a mastectomy. Um, so when you're looking at the two, you might see is something a lesion, you know, something concerning, is it only in one breast? So when you see something different, the breast looking a different shape, then you might want to investigate further. Or is it global asymmetry, global as in the word everywhere? Or is it focal just in one area? Or when you compare from previous um, imaging, is it developing? So if last year somebody had a mammogram and we were looking at glandular tissue showing low density, it looked smooth and nothing. And this time it looks like there's an increase in tissue in that area. So you want to double check because there could be something um, manifesting behind that. Another mammographic feature is architectural distortion. So it looks like a star, so to speak, but we need to be careful about that because it may be related to previous surgery. So if someone has had breast reduction or even a lump was removed, if you do a mammogram now, it might show some kind of architectural distortion. So it's, again, it's just about knowing what features look concerning and what are typical features of surgery. If somebody has had trauma on the menu, it could be an accident or someone has hit on the breast or a dog jumped on the breast or they could, you know, it could be trauma. So on the mammogram, it will look like it's an architectural distortion, but how do you actually distinguish that from cancer? The other thing that may uh, cause a total distortion is radiation therapy, if you've had that. So all these, especially like textural distortion is very, um, if you do breast digital tomosynthesis, because you see the breast in slices, a bit like CT, um, you can, the distortion is easily you know, seen in that way and you can be able to scrutinize whether it's something concerning or not. So we've talked about mammographic features there. I talked about one, masses, two, calcifications. We then talked about asymmetry and architectural distortion. So those are some of the things we look at on a mammogram as well as skin around the mammogram. How is it looking like? So when you're looking at the mammogram, distortion, remember we talked about distortion and can you see on the mammogram? Looks like that, that bit. So if you remember when we looked, all oh, this is hard tissue, but can you see that just looks like the structure looks a bit dodgy. And also that bit, can you see there? It looks very different. Here, perhaps, yes, we could say distortion as well as asymmetry, because when you see that is all looking the same, but here, this is slightly different when you compare the, uh, this area and that. Okay, yeah, we've got a raised hand from Osmond. Sorry, I pronounced that wrongly. You have a question? I think we can check questions at the end of the presentation. At the end, okay. So that was distortion uh, on the mammogram. Another feature, mass, we talked about earlier. Can you see that now? Yeah? So fatty, fatty breast, and that is very, so these are the easiest if you're interpreting, because obviously you can see that breast and you think, what is that? You can see that from the back of the room. 
Okay, calcification. Now, very difficult. See, that's why I talked about five megapixel um, monitors. So calcification in this case on this laptop, that's not the best. We wouldn't interpret from thing, but I hope I can just, can you see some white dots there close to the nipple? That's how calcifications, you know, we look at uh, on the mammogram. And if it's within dense tissue, you can imagine that's even more complicated. Uh, but yeah, they tend to look like that. Round masses I talked about. Yeah, that's another one. So very dense. I looked at and can you see the lymph node there dense? That's probably intramammary lymph nodes as well. And all that coming down is a vessel. But can you see how that vessel becomes very big? It's almost saying, feed me, feed me because of that. That's it was a typical cancer. Um, and then another mass here. So they actually, one is dense. Can you imagine it might be dense, it might be there, but not, it looks like a soft tissue mass. Asymmetry, yeah. So dense breast, but can you see that? It just looks slightly different. So that's why it's good to check like for like. So you must start that way, looking, looking, looking. We're here, doesn't really look the same as that. So what's going on here? Soft tissue masses on a mammogram. Again, very difficult to see, but actually you can just begin to see that that, what's that? But, and this is where I talked about good mammograph positioning. You could almost mistake and get carried away and think I concentrate on that, but that looks like when positioning the nipple was rolled behind. So actually that's a nipple, but with time you start uh, differentiating that it was supposed to be here. Um, but actually on this mammogram, it's this bit that um, we are questioning. And on the other view, yeah. Okay, so perception of abnormalities, how do we actually go about looking at mammograms? Okay, so I talked about quality and display of mammograms. That's how you want to see them. There's previous, there are new ones. Okay, and so if you're looking at them, you start you know, looking at that and comparing the two to see what has changed. Okay, so in this case, there was, that doesn't look good. And there, something is going on. Okay, so in terms of perception of abnormalities, they're just areas that you shouldn't see things in there. So just where I've circled their medial areas of the breast, it should be nice and fatty. The minute you see something here, it shouldn't be there. So just where I've circled, can you see that? But also on the opposite side, that shouldn't be there. So what's going on? Is that normal tissue? Is that something we should be concerned about? And on the other view, oblique view, we call that Milky Way. Again, it should be nice and fatty there. If you were interpreting mammograms and anything, looks like, you know, different from what normal features look like. You have to question that and do further tests. Extra views, it could be magnification views, it could be spot compression views or lateral. So anything extended views to scrutinize that area. And uh, most recently we've got breast tomosynthesis and contrast enhanced mammography. I'll, I'll just uh, talk about that at the um, end of this presentation. So these are 2D mammography, full field digital mammography. So if you see anything abnormal, then you have to do further tests to scrutinize that area until you are happy that there's nothing um, concerning at all. Okay, so again, they're just showing areas that you should pay attention to. That doesn't mean you ignore the rest of the breast, but those are what we call forbidden areas that you, first of all, you sh there shouldn't be anything in there. And after that, don't stop. Now search the whole breast, thinking of those features we've talked about. What is normal? What is not uh, normal? What are normal structures? Sometimes it can be tricky because actually normal breast tissue like there may mimic something sinister. So, and that's a bit we say that knowledge of breast composition and density is important. Okay, and that just shows um, the nipple area too. 
scrutinize as well. Okay, so how do we um, analyze the signs um, when you're looking at them, though the causation I've talked about, the mass distortion. So that's um, that's based on the risk of malignancy. So it, whenever you're looking at that, you're thinking, oh, what, what is this? Or is it anything concerning? Is it normal? And it's uh, the analyzing is according to the Royal College of Radiologists. And they've recommended the uh, classification uh, using a five point scale. We also have American College of Radiologists by system. So it's just like if it's um, um, not concerning, it's as easy as one, two, three, four, five. So you know that if someone is talking about five, then something is sinister. And there we are. So that's my M1, just mammography one, it's normal. So if the mammogram, you, you checked everything and was happy, M1. Two, there could be something like those masses I talked about. Maybe it's a cyst, but it's something that is normal. So M2, it's benign. M3 is indeterminate. You don't know, probably benign, probably something worrying. M4 is suspicious. Five, highly suspicious. But from three to five are the ones we are calling back for further tests. So I took to, uh, mentioned a little bit about breast uh, tomosynthesis, uh, yes. So this one is the normal mammogram that I've been showing along, uh, 2D, fulfilled digital mammography. Okay. And somewhere in that breast, something doesn't look right. Okay. But at the same time, it, does, it, it looks like, you know, you could easily say, oh, maybe it's normal breast tissue. Um, but you can see somewhere, if you see here, it's a bit smooth, just carries on. But here, we're beginning to, your eyes are sort of stopping somewhere there. And this is tricky and comes with time for to know that is there something wrong. Again, possibly somewhere there. So this lady had the tomosynthesis. Can you see now how it just brings up everything? That looks very, very worrying. Okay. And here, that's the same thing. Okay, did that to play. Okay, so that's uh, viewing uh, uh, breast stomachs. And so it's done in slices, a bit like CT. Um, and it's quite, um, it's been a revolution because we can see them in slices and things that were not very visible on um, fulfilled mammography become very apparent on tomosynthesis. Then I just put in a bit uh, on contrast enhanced mammography. So again, that they would have come for normal uh, mammogram and maybe they've felt a lump and clinicians think it's suspicious. So can you see on the left side, that's a, a mammogram and it just looks like, you know, there's, that's our normal breast tissue. Where do you begin? Yes, you might think, oh, there's something there because it just looks a bit bulky there. But you do a contrast in Hans mammography. Can you see how that just becomes apparent? So that was a cancer, but also what it revealed and very um, subtle as not on the right side, there was actually something there. So with contrast in Hans mammography, a special dye is injected and then mammograms are taken after two minutes once the contrast has gone in, so it's, you then obtain mammograms. There are also sophisticated tools coming up, read um, mammograms, so computer-aided detection, it's been there for a while. So basically it's like, you're looking at mammograms, click a button and it can sort of help you to, you know, the machine to highlight areas that it thinks look like maybe there's calcification or there's a mass. So it's like added, um, interpretation, basically. Then also there's a big thing which you all probably know about artificial intelligence coming in. Um, again, we're looking at how that will come in to uh, support the breast imaging, of course. Okay, so what's really the role of image interpretation and mammography? So it's really to reveal a bigger picture. 
Uh, you look at the mammograms, what's going on and advise, you know, what the next step would be. But also you analyze those features and grade the features. So M1, M2, M3, M4, M5 for further assessment. And as I mentioned, so from M3 to um, five, you send for assessment. And with that is also managing uh, uh, client anxieties. And that's why it's important to know exactly what's going. Is it a normal thing? Is it not? Because if it's normal and you actually say it's, it's abnormal, sometimes it does happen. That's why I talked about like accountability in the beginning and being responsible for your work and keeping up with learning and CPD. Because sometimes you may look at this feature and actually think it's normal, but it's actually abnormal. But the most important thing as well is to detect those uh, small cancers so that they are treated effectively with less aggression. And what I mean by that is if something is small, they can easily remove it with normal tissue around it. But if we miss that, it goes on and becomes a big cancer, which means the patient will have to receive aggressive treatments or chemotherapy and all that. Sometimes it's unavoidable because the cancer would have just been found when it was big anyway. But if we have to do better, it's about learning to know uh, what those features look like so that we can pick up small cancers early when they, are, they can be managed um, effectively. Thank you very much for listening. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Mulanga, for this presentation. It has come at the right time, especially that the field of the field that is advocating for raw extension and image interpretation is uh, one of them. So uh, thank you once more. Uh, at this point, I think we can take questions and uh, contributions. Uh, the floor is open. You can be, uh, raise your hands and go. We'll Oh, did um, I think somebody was saying um, they could no longer hear me, but I don't know whether it was everyone. Oh, I think they were helped. Oh, they were okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? I think I, uh, I can ask a question. Yes. That's out of uh, curiosity. Uh, yes. You uh, usually have uh, patients with uh, implants. Oh, yes. We do, yes. You're cutting there. Oh, okay. So even with implants, that doesn't uh, stop uh, anyone from doing the mammogram. So we still see those women and we do two views as just like the um, normal uh, mammogram. So craniocodal and oblique views, but we also do Eklund, what is called Eklund. So where you sort of get the tissue away from the implant. And that's very useful actually, because sometimes it could be cancers hiding behind the implant. And it's only when you do Eklund views that something becomes very visible. And sometimes even after doing the Eklund views, you don't see anything. That's why there are so many tests in mammography. They do a mammogram, they'll come for an ultrasound, they would have had a clinical breast examination. So through all those tests, one would have picked up something you would think. But yeah, within mammography, we still do with implants. Obviously you've got to be cautious with compression, but you know, and women can be very sometimes um, anxious about compression, worried that uh, the implant could be damaged, but there's been no evidence to do that. But you need to be very, you know, uh, careful that you are applying moderate compression at the same time as uh, making sure that it's a good quality mammogram, because if it's, the compression is not adequate, then the mammogram will look blurry and you won't be able to see small things, small features. So, um, yeah, but we do, we do. Oh, 
Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. So we hand from uh, Vicky. Vicky, you've got a question? And just while we wait for Vicky, I was just going to ask, do we have anyone or any departments that are um, interpret mammograms on the call today? No, possibly for me, I, I, yeah, we have a geology, but for me, I just want to, to ask about the tomo, tomo, tomography tomo, yes, that we talked about earlier. Yes. This is, yeah. Yes. That 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 bit that 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 bit uh, I didn't understand it very well. Then another oh. question about the, about the diary. Oh. So it, the other question is, is about sorry. The diary you said you inject on the on the on the breast. You you take two minutes, then you can do the uh -huh. mammogram. Is uh -huh. there a specific specific name for the diary? Oh, we use iodine, iodine. So breast tomosynthesis is 3D mammography because yes. the normal imaging we use is 2D, isn't it? So the tomosynthesis is ability yes. to view the breast in slices. So similar to CT scan, and it allows areas that appear to have a mass to be viewed layer by layer to see if the suspicious area is just overlapping breast tissue. Because you know, when we look at it, the way I showed the mammogram, sometimes you can just think, oh, it's a normal tissue. But when you do tomosynthesis, 3D uh, mammography, you literally separate them and you can see it in slices layer by layer. So if something was behind that, you could literally see it come through and you'll be able to see whether this is something worrying or it's not. So 3D mammography is breast tomosynthesis. And then the uh, other one you asked was contrast enhanced mammography. So all these, the two of them are like additional imaging, supplementary imaging. So they, they hope to give extra information. So you bring the woman back, they had the normal mammogram and you're worried about an area, you can actually, A, you can do breast tomosynthesis or you can do contrast enhanced uh, mammography which will help you look at something that was looking difficult here to actually streamline it and you're able to see um, through the breast. So contrast is a specialist mammography test aimed to highlight areas of the breast and you can see there, I hope my, I click the text and I hope it's not masking the screen, but you can see there how it highlights the um, uh, breast, isn't it? You see that this area is something that you couldn't see clearly on the other one. So it's a special dye injected into the vein before a mammogram. I hope I've explained that clearly. Okay, thank you so much, Madam. Uh, before we go to Madam Helen, we have uh, a question for you in the chat from uh, Rudo. Says, oh, do you yes. do mammograms uh -huh. on men? If yes, in what cases? So All right. Yeah, yeah. Very good question, Rudolf. We do on men. And it's the one, remember the start of the presentation I talked about indications for the exam. So you could have screening uh, setting where women aged 50 and above, that is really in the women population. But when uh, people go to see their doctors, GPs, it can be a man, it can be a woman. And remember, any of us can feel a lump or anything can happen. So yes, a lot of times every day, we see men as well. You talked about in which cases. So sometimes they have what they call gynecomastia, so increased tissue behind the nipple. And it's a normal thing, but it can be very tender and painful. But also they, they can develop cancers as well. So when they feel a lump, they come. And usually we just do an oblique, uh, image so side uh, view because it may be tricky to do a, um, a cranial cord, but so we do the oblique ones. This one below. 
so yes, we do see men in clinic. Thank you. Um, Madam Helen, you can go ahead. Thank you very much, moderator. I would want to thank uh, the presenter. It's a well informative uh, presentation. Thank you. And, uh, I've got a, a lot of information out of it. Uh, okay. First, to begin with is uh, the quality of the images and how they are done. Mm -hmm. In most cases, um, those who do mammograms, they miss the pectorius muscle. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've noticed a lot of radiologists complaining about when they are reporting, yeah. complaining of, uh, of missing the pectoris muscle. Mm -hmm. So this is a well-informed uh, presentation, which uh, it's showing us how you do it, the quality. Yeah. Then so secondly, I would want to ask you the protocols you follow. Uh -huh. Like us in Zambia, we've been screening the, the women. Yeah. And uh, we do both ultrasound as well as uh, mammography, just for complementary. I, I don't know how you do it yourselves. And then okay. we are planning like, when you do the mammography, mm -hmm. you do the ultrasound, you can also do a biopsy in case there is a lesion which you want mm -hmm. to verify. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how you do it there, but yeah. uh, uh, looking like that, uh, you manage a patient uh, at an early stage if they develop cancers. Yeah. And then uh, I also wanted to contribute on the gamma commercial, it's, it's becoming a common condition in men. Yeah. Uh, we have been seeing these cases, and especially above 50 in so many men. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what is the cause, but some they associate it to certain drugs they take, others uh, it could be also genetical. Yeah. So I would I would challenge to, to those who are doing mammography and ultrasound, especially to this group, we do some kind of uh, studies to, to, to know what is really causing this because it's becoming a, a concern and a, a problem to society. Otherwise, thank you very much for this presentation. Oh, you're welcome. Was that Helen? Yes, please. Oh, sorry. And if you don't mind me asking, Helen, uh, what, what uh, role in the hospital do you do? Uh, as we do both, we do ultrasound as well as uh, mammography. Okay. So once a patient does mammography, they come for, for ultrasound, for complementary okay. view. Okay. Yes. So just to answer a few questions that you posed there, uh, yes, good positioning, very, very important because you can miss things at, at the back of the breast. You want to make sure so the pectoral muscle should come down to the level of the nipple such that you've got the back of the breast uh, in the field of view. Like I said, unless a lump is in an area that you, you can't really see, for example, it's going up to where the clavicle is. So we know that that's probably difficult, but where the breast is concerned, you want to get adequate tissue in. And there's a whole lot of, it's a course on its own too. You probably know already training to do mammography positioning and, and all that. But yes, good quality mammogram, very important. Compression as well, because if it's blurry, if that, those distortions are showed local space and you won't be able to see them. You want to really make sure you see um, and things like at the, you know, inframammary angle there. So again, very important that you position correctly. Um, you talked about gynecomastia in men. Yes, even younger than 50 and taking medication sometimes is a culprit. And it's not even a fault of their own. You know, sometimes if you've got an ailment and you've been put on medication, so some of the uh, drugs we take may cause that at the back of the uh, nipple. And it's just about, you know, being investigating and reassuring them because it can be worrying and they sometimes feel that it's a lump behind there. So 
clinicians and radiologists do that very well where they see them and reassure them. So here in terms of gynecomastia, we do uh, a mammogram because if they're aged foot and over, actually, there could be something else going on. So we could do it. But if the clinician is happy, they just examine them and they don't send them to have a mammogram. If they remember, I talked about grading, they think that it's going to, they're worried about three to five, then we'll end up doing an ultrasound as well. You also, Helen, talked about uh, protocol. So women usually for us, mammography is the first line of um, um, management in seeing women because it's got higher sensitivity as in pickup rate for cancers is higher. So first they will have a mammogram and only if, so you won't screen with ultrasound and mammography at the same time, but we'll do mammography. And if they, there's something that uh, we've seen, then they will invite them to come back for an ultrasound. I must say though that there's a lot of, uh, there's a trial going on for 3D ultrasound and it's meant to be used as a screening tool um, uh, in future. So that's quite uh, interesting. Um, there's a question from Joe who says, what site do you use to introduce contrast in, in the breast? So a bit, you know, like CT, just a uh, front of aspect of the, uh elbow so um that's what we use unless they can't get the veins and they'll go to uh the wrist but we know that that's very painful so usually it's just like you know when we're having a blood test they're taking a blood test yeah so the same site we use uh and is there timing before you do the exam after introducing so after the contrast goes in then after two minutes then you start doing the mammograms craniocordal and oblique ones um, and sometimes you might do delayed pictures just to see in case it's a breast or cancer that takes long to the uptake for contrast takes longer. So you just want to make sure that you can see those areas clearly. Any other questions? Yeah, so um, Helen was just talking about there. Uh, actually, that sec for where you are seeing things is again, very good to pull the breast. So at the back of the breast, that's inframammary angles should be seen. Peck muscle, I talked about coming down to the level of the nipple. Nipple is here. So can you see that's nice and, you know, got to the back of the breast. So anything that's going on should be seen there. Thank you very much for the answers. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? You're welcome. Just responding to your text there. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. It seems like there are no more questions. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, well, thank you very much, everybody, for joining. So, once more, uh, thank you, Mrs. Milenga, for this uh, informative presentation. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for having me. We'll surely call you uh, again. And uh, thank you, everyone who logged in. I uh, will be having another presentation in the, in the next two weeks. We will we'll share on different also platforms. And those who are not on those platforms, I'm sure they will receive uh, the notification and the link the same way they did to this one. So, uh, once more, uh, thank you very much, everyone. I think we can call it a day. Thank you. Thank you very much and good night. Thank you very much and good night. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Bye.